All right, everyone, let's get started. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Haven Quinlan, and I'm the Senior Director of Programming here at the U of SC Alumni Association. And it's my pleasure to get to introduce our host to you all today. I have a few reminders before we get started. So we wanna hear all of your questions today. Um, if you aren't super familiar with Zoom, there is a panel across the bottom of your screen. There should be a Q&A button and a chat button. Whatever is easier for you, you can type your questions into both of those and we will get to all of those at the end of the presentation. Um, but without further ado, I'd love to introduce our host to you all today. Designed with the knowledge and insight provided by more than 35 years of experience, Go Hagen and Company develops and operates deluxe group travel programs for America's most prestigious museums, colleges, universities, and cultural institutions. The company's unique itineraries and educational components are paired with the style and comforts of the world's finest cruise ships, trains, and hotels, and enhanced by world-class guides and academic experts. Robert Bingle has worked with Go Hagen and Company for eight years. In a previous role, he served as a travel director and led several of Go Hagen and Co's itineraries. He's been fortunate to travel with the University of South Carolina alumni. In his current role, Robert works with representatives of university alumni associations and thoroughly enjoys his annual trip to Columbia. So thank you so much, Robert, for your time today. I know we're all looking forward to hearing from you. Thank you, Haven. And thank you everyone for having me be a part of this. Uh, it's very exciting to start talking travel again and future travel. As, um, <clears throat> as you all know and can imagine, there, there has not been much uh, in, in the means of international travel the last 15, 16 months. So things are really turning around. Um, and we're excited to be a part of it and offer some trips with the University of South Carolina. Um, I've had the fortune of working with the, the university here the last few years, then also going on trips with some of the alumni uh, and always enjoy myself. I'm from Chicago, we're based out of Chicago. So I tend to, to make my trip down to Columbia strategically in the late fall. And you know, you get a, uh, instead of having a nice fall day here, it's 30 degrees in you know, the beginning of November and I avoid it and I'm down in places like Columbia while my, my friends up here are, are bearing the weather. So I always love coming down. I look forward to my next trip down. I am going to uh, share my screen here so uh, we can dive in and, and start talking more about travel or kind of uh, touch on some of the elements of uh, different areas of travel as we return to it. Um, and then I know Haven's going to monitor for questions because I'm happy to answer questions during, uh, after, um, whatever uh, works for everyone. So I'm going to share my screen here and let's hope it works. <clears throat> okay. So hopefully we're, we're, we can see it there. That's a, a picture of Santorini to kick it off for us here, uh, you know, with the whitewashed roofs right on the right on the sea there. Um, so uh, again, looking forward to, to talking more about our company and our trips. And move it forward, there we go, okay. Um, so Go Hagen and Company, as in the introduction that Haven provided, um, We've been in the alumni educational travel industry for 35 years. That's our main uh, mode of, of business. We're not in the market um, going out to the general public. We specifically work with university alumni associations and some museum groups, nonprofit groups. So because of that, our emphasis is really on the educational elements. Um, we accomplish that a number of ways throughout our trips. Um, our guides, our local guides are all highly uh, educated, very experienced, all locals of the area. Oftentimes, they're teachers, professors, uh, so you're not being led around Santorini with, you know, a college kid. Nothing wrong with that. I was one of those in Chicago for a number of years, but there is an added element of having someone who's actually, you know, have, has a PhD telling you about the ancient history of uh, Santorini or Mykonos while you're there. 
the other element that, that's very important to our business model is that when we use ships, we fully charter the ships. So it's just our groups. It's not half the general public, half uh, our groups. This allows us to create exclusive itineraries that's only available through alumni associations like the University of South Carolina. It also allows us to adjust course if there's issues with weather, things like that, uh, and really make it a, uh, a unique uh, travel experience that you can only get through this alumni market. Um, you know, our, our itineraries, we go on all the continents of the world and we think we have a nice mixture of ocean going land, uh, more adventure excursion style. And you'll see that over the course of my, of my talk here that I think we do have a nice uh, mixture with the University of South Carolina for the end of 2021, we have one trip and then looking into 2022. And then finally, we have expert guides and lecturers, which on the trip, we have um, special speakers in certain areas, as you'll see when I describe our Celtic lands trip, um, we have David Eisenhower leading us through the beaches of Normandy, or on other trips in Poland, we have Lech Walesa who joins us. But we also have lecturers from the universities themselves who are experts in the region and area you're going to. Uh, and they're available throughout the trip and they'll lecture throughout the trip. So oftentimes, you know, let's say you're on a cruise and it's cruising in the evening before dinner, you might have a lecture from someone who's an expert on Potmos the evening before you arrive at Potmos. So you go into it with this kind of added in-depth educational component. Um, and not to say that they're not fun either. It's not just like being in a, in a classroom the whole time, of course. It's very experiential. And I can tell you from previous experience uh, and having traveled with some of the South Carolina folks that it, it's a good time too. So that is kind of the general MO of, of Go Hagen and Company. And now I'm gonna, there we go. Um, so of course, the big thing on everyone's mind is what is travel going like going forward? And um, it's going to be somewhat different, I think, for, for the beginning uh, as we return to travel. But I think in a lot of ways, it'll be positive. So from ships to hotel accommodations to the operators like ourselves, there's health and safety has always been at the forefront, but now it's tenfold. So I mean, as far as just having sanitary conditions, um, as far as just having medical teams if needed, um, everyone is really up the ante on that. So I think that, that's important. Um, having a travel program staff. So we ha will have at least three to four go professional Go Hagen traveler, travel directors with all of our programs, with the travelers. They're every day available 24 seven. So if there were something to happen and someone needed to stay behind or this or that, um, you have a, a Go Hagen professional with you. Um, shipboard travel, ground transportation excursions, again, um, they're going to just, um, I, I don't want to get too into specifics of the actual protocols because they're changing weekly, they're changing daily. Um, tried to go to, first of all, you couldn't go to much of Europe, but if you tried to get into a country it might, uh, a month ago, you might have had to not wear a mask, not do this. Now, some instances you can, they're changing and uh, uh, they're those safe, they are changing for the better as far as being more open and being able to do more things and being able to socialize more and not having as many restrictions, but in a very safe way. Uh, and we're every single day where we're following all our destinations and all the guidelines, the updates as they continue to change. Uh, one element I would like to say before I get into the trips to kind of uh, it, it kind of a sequitur would be for all of our trips going forward in 2021 and 2022, we're having something called a book with confidence where you can put down your deposit, book your trip, save your position, but your deposit is fully refundable, fully cash refund up until the final payment date, which is 95 days before the trip. And so we're hopeful that that'll give people confidence that three months out from a departure, you can make the educated guess that, hey, I'm ready to go forward with this trip. Um, et cetera. And, and so we're doing that for all of 2022 and we're hoping that that will uh, help ease people back into travel. Um, so with that, I'm going to start talking about some trips, which uh, I'm very excited to do. Uh, and I'm starting with, we have one remaining trip in the fall of 2021 with the University of South Carolina. And that is our Island Life Ancient Greece. Uh, and absolutely a, a heck of a trip. I, I, I love this. I love this itinerary. I think it offers you the mainstays of the Greek Isles, uh, but where some people will go to Athens, go to Mykonos, Santorini, then go back. Um, we really hit some of these more off the beaten path islands and locations that 
give you the full feel of the Greek islands. So you can kind of see on the map there, we begin in Athens and then we make our way down through these various islands uh, and then finish just southwest of, uh, of Athens in, uh, in the Peloponnese Peninsula. So you get a whole lot and I'll, I'll talk a little bit about the, the itinerary here and it'll be October 15th to 23rd this coming fall. And so uh, plenty of space on the ship and I'll talk a little about, about the ship next. Oh, I'm sorry. So the ship you'll see in the bottom left is called the Bogavi, and it's uh, a ship company uh, from the Ponac Cruises. It's a French company that we've been using for 11 years now. We're the largest charter of this ship. It's about 150 people. It's all balconies. It's all inclusive, open bar, everything like that. Um, and for all of our trips, all excursions are included. So it's one price for everything. The only thing that's not included is airfare. So everything else is included. So. Right off the bat on this itinerary, um, you get to a unique destination. You see up there, uh, just top center, you'll see this, um, these monasteries. It's called uh, Meteora. Uh, we go to Volos or Meteora. So before going down into the islands, we go north. And these are hanging monasteries up in the mountains. Uh, I mean, it's absolutely spectacular. They were built in the 14th century to avoid uh, invasions from the Ottomans. And these monasteries uh, have been there since. They're no longer in use. but are just spectacular. Um, so from there, we then start going down into the island. Right off the bat, um, you get the feel for what a small ship does for you compared to you know, a mega ship of 500 to 1,500, 2,000. We go to Delos. Delos in the bottom right-hand corner, you'll see is side of the Dalian League, the Apollo Sanctuary. Um, those are his protective lines. But so we go to Delos, we get there about 6 a.m. The ferries from Mykonos come over about 10.30 or so. So we from 7 a.m. when we get off to 10.30 are the only ones on the entire island. Of and it's spectacular. The rooms are incredible there. Um, so then, you know, when we're back on the boat, having lunch, drinking a little ouzo, you wave and you see all the, the, the ferries coming over from Mykonos. So you really get that special uh, experience that a small ship affords you. And then we spend the afternoon and evening in Mykonos, which uh, the windmill you see up there is spectacular. Then we get into some of the different islands, Patmos, where uh, they, they claim to be the site of um, St. John Rhea's Revelation, and you can see the kind of mini stone cathedral that um, that's said to have happened. Then we go to Rhodos, the famous site of the Colossus of Rhodes, and we go underneath the, the statue is no longer there, of course, but you can kind of almost visualize it as we come into Rhodes. Um, and then Lindos for the Acropolis, which is that uh, bottom center picture that you're kind of overlooking the sea and the ocean and it's spectacular and you can take a donkey ride up or down or do the walk depending um and then we go to santorini you cannot beat santorini uh, those are the pictures up front but then akrotiri is really neat it's on the other side of the island from santorini it's a bronze age site uh, that's incredibly well preserved um and you can kind of see the village and how it's inner workings would have would have been in a really well uh maintained uh, setting. And then finally, we finish on the Peloponnese Peninsula for Epidaurus, uh, the incredible rooms there. So it's a, it's a great trip, and we're excited to offer it uh, this fall as one of our kind of first trips coming back uh, in the fall. The next trip, so now we're getting into the winter of, uh, of 2022. Now, this is a big one. Uh, I almost think of it as two trips in one. This is our Amazon River and then Machu Picchu, the Sacred Valley trip. So um, Essentially, we begin uh, going through the heart of the Amazon and the Amazon River. I'll come back to the map, but you can see the ship we go on up in your top right is MV Sabiro. Um, so it's only, I think, about 30 people on it. Everyone has a water, uh, a water suite overlooking, you know, these beautiful landscapes. Um, so you can see we start and we go down the Amazon River and the first portion of it, we're going to... Uh, the Amazon, uh, the Akali River, uh, we go to Marignon, and it's really the in-depth ecological part of this trip. So the first portion of it is nature, nature, nature. Uh, it's a birder's paradise down there. Um, it's five-star accommodations on this ship, uh, and you're just completely remote. It, it's amazing. We have two or three naturalists with you the entire time, pointing everything out. You go to the pink dolphins. We stop at a little village within the Amazon. Um, so it, it's, a, it's a remarkable start to the trip and 
or the itinerary. So as you can see, that's kind of the beginning of the trip. Uh, we also spent some time in Lima and Iquitos, just to begin with, that's the top left. So you get a little bit of the Peruvian culture, you see a, a bit of the pre-Columbian influence just outside the city. Um, so that's how we start the trip. And then from there, we go into what uh, I can only say is one of the, the most spectacular travel experiences um, you can imagine. That would be Machu Picchu, but also the, uh, the Sacred Valley in Cusco. So the Sacred Valley, we go and see the Inca Fortress of Otentambo. Uh, we stay at a wonderful property there, right, right in the valley, uh, right in the heart of the valley. And then we make our way to Machu Picchu. At Ma Machu Picchu, we stay at night at the base of Machu Picchu. Um, so, you, you know, you're kind of, you, you know, your nerves are up, it's great. Yeah, the, you know, you're up in, the, up in the mountains getting ready and then you wake up real early and you start heading up and, you know, you can see the sun coming through the mountains up at Machu Picchu. And then we go back in the evening too. So if you want to see the sun set uh, and, and, and it really is spectacular. Um, you know, I think it was the 15th century Incans built that citadel, I always, think that the emperor or the, uh, you know, the, the leader who came up with the idea saying, this is where we should build our citadel. That is, uh, you know, some of his worker advisors might have been, uh, you know, sir, are you, are you sure you want to build it up there? I've got a great spot. It's just a mile, it's flat and it's sea level. But uh, in any event, uh, the people who did make it uh, have left an incredible uh, archeological treasure for, for travelers to see and, and we enjoy being able to bring people to that. And we finally finish in Cusco, which is one of the highest elevated cities in the world. And that's the, the, the center square that you can see there. Uh, this is a neat one. Okay, so the River Life Dutch Waterway. So this is one of our classic uh, European river trips. Um, and uh, uh, there's a new element to it for the trip in 2022, and that's the Floriad Expo. So the Floriad Expo is a once in a decade sort of cultural uh, expo that is world renowned. They, they they build it up. It takes seven or eight years as they're planning building it, and it's it's only really available in its initial stages for about a six month period. And so we're going to go and experience that. In addition to some of these other uh, incredible sites of uh, the Netherlands and Belgium, and it's a wonderful time, right in the the peak tulip season, April seventeenth. Um, so kind of digging a little bit more into that. So the, the ship we use, the Amadeus Star, Amadeus is a wonderful company. We've been using them for a number of years. It's about 120 or so people on it. Um, you know, everybody's on right on the river, on the water, uh, no like, you know, center cabins or anything like that. An incredible top level. You've got uh, an excellent restaurant, lounge, um, really a wonderful river cruising experience. And uh, so as we start, we begin by going to, we begin in Amsterdam with an Amsterdam pre-tour extension too, for those wanting to spend more time in Amsterdam. Um, and then this is another one kind of like the Greek Isles where we have some of the mainstays, whether it's Ghent or Antwerp, um, you know, Amsterdam, Bruges, but then some neater places that people don't get to often uh, in these various waterways in this region. And a uh, prime example would be right off the bat, Nijmegen, we go to the Kroler Mueller Museum. That's on the bottom there with the, those kind of outdoor sculptures. And um, for my money, I think it's one of the most underrated best art museums in the world. So it has the second largest collection of the Van, Go Van Gogh's works. And it has a lot of works by all sorts of famous painters, uh, Mondrian, I think, Riacalo, all these people who it's not the big, most famous ones, but it's their work. And you can see kind of the, their early works and things of that nature. Um, there's Monet there. Uh, and and it's, it's so quiet there. We're one of the only groups ever there. And, um, then we move on and we go down to the, uh, the Kinderdijk and the, the Delta Works. Uh, and right off you know, our second day, we're getting into the idea of how the Dutch basically built 50% of the country. Um, I mean, 50% of the country is only one meter above sea level, 26% of it's below. So you know, the famous saying, God built the world, the Dutch built the Netherlands. But you, we go to all these various sites to see how it's done and see how it's still continually done with uh, the dikes, the sluices, the dams, all of it. Um, uh, there's no place on earth like it. Um, then we continue on the, the Delta, uh, excuse me, we go to uh, Ghent and Bruges. We split the day between Ghent and Bruges and have wonderful city tours there. Same with Antwerp, uh, you know, and then we're getting into kind of a little bit different uh, 
Belgian um, influences there. Rotterdam, um, you know, we see the, uh, Rotterdam's the main site of kind of their maritime history and they have incredible uh, sites and museums there to, to really capture kind of the, uh, the full Dutch East India influence and, and how they did that. Um, and then we go after Rotterdam to the Kirkenhof Gardens, which is in the top left. Uh, and that's a, a garden that's only open for, I think, seven or eight weeks a year when the tulips are in full bloom. Um, and it's, uh, it's spectacular. It's, it's spectacular. It's what you think of with the tulip of, of the Netherlands. And then finally, we go to the Floria Horticulture Expo and spend a full day there. So it's everything horticulture. They, uh, the theme is a green new city, how to bring green uh, into cities around the world. So there's a lot of new, fresh ideas there. And I'm um, very excited. To do a time check here because I know myself. Once I get going, I can go on for ages about these trips. So the Celtic lands. All right, this is a great one, and this is one where I mentioned we have a very special speaker. We actually have three. So this is one of our spring trips. It's in May. Uh, it's on the Montavi, which should be um, a partnership to the um, to the Bogan the one we use in the Greek Isles. I'll come back, but there it is on the left. So same thing all balconies, all inclusive. Um, so here we have the UK and then we have Normandy and the beaches of Normandy. And with uh, the, the big highlight being, you know, two and a half full days at the beaches of Normandy with Dwight David Eisenhower II, who is the grandson of David Eisenhower and also the, um, and also a, a historian, a writer. He's written a Pulitzer Prize nominated book about D-Day, uh, and he lectures throughout, and he's with us throughout the first portion of the trip, uh, and lectures about D-Day as we make our way to the beaches. So it's, I mean, it's, it's, it's unbelievable, right? And he, he's so wonderful. Um, and and to, to add to that, on the bottom right, you'll see his wife is Julie Nixon, daughter of Richard Nixon. And she couldn't be, you know, any more fantastic either. She's, she's a wealth of knowledge. She obviously has seen and been around a lot of significant parts of American history, uh, doesn't shy away from her father's legacy, uh, and, and really adds her own kind of take on, on all these kind of sites and places we're seeing. And, and I, I very, very uh, intelligent and, and love hearing her take on all of this as well. So we go, we do Arrow Mosh, where they had the fake uh, fake kind of armies to try to, uh, the decoys to try to uh, confuse the opponents. We have uh, uh, Omaha Beach, we have Utah Beach, Ponte de Hoc, St. Marie de Grace, which is a famous kind of little cathedral where an allied paratrooper got stuck and was up there for, I think, like 14 hours before getting rescued. Um, and then we go to the American Cemetery, which is an incredible experience. And David provides a, um, a reef laying and, and anyone who has any family who are in the war can share their stories and it's, uh, it's, it's pretty remarkable. So after that, then we have a completely different feel to the trip. We go to the Celtic lands, uh, the, uh, the UK and some, and some real neat parts of it. So it starts with uh, Tresco, the Isles of Scilly, which is a southern point, go back to the map, southern point of England. You can see it right there on the bottom southwest point there. And the highlight are these gardens, Tresco Gardens, and you can see them up to the left. That's not a uh, that's not a false image. That's actually those plants are there in the bottom of uh, of England. And so, in the 18th 19th century, a gentleman started bringing these international plants to this this kind of sanctuary down there, and it's just grown from there. So, in a single day, I mean, you can see thousands of plants from every you know every part of the world, and and it's uh, it, it's amazing. And, and it's, it's kind of a neat experience. And we go to Hollyhead for Wales, where we see a Welsh choir. We go along uh, the beautiful coastline there. Uh, then we go to Dublin, where you can see my bottom picture there, the, uh, the Trinity College, you know, full day in Dublin, full night. We don't go anywhere. Um, and we go to, we have the Merry Plowboys uh, come and join us. And they're these four kind of raucous Irish musicians to give you the full feel after everyone's had a few Guinnesses. It's uh, they, they bring the house down. It's great. So then we finally, we finish in the Scottish Isles, the Scottish Highlands with Tobo Mary, which you see kind of up top there, the beautiful uh, pastel houses and then uh, Isle of Mo, Isle of Iona, and then the Kyle of Akash and then Eileen Donan, which I'll go back as the picture there at top, which is just stunning. And uh, 
you're right in the middle of all these locks and you see this castle out of nowhere and these undulating kind of hills and these small mountains. And uh, so by the time it's ended, you've been to Normandy, you've been to Wales, England, uh, Ireland. It's, uh, it's just a heck of a trip. Really um, the Great Journey Through Europe. Okay. Uh, we call it the Great Journey because there are a lot of things going on in it. Um, so it starts in Amsterdam, makes its way down the Rhine, and then does four days in Switzerland. And you can kind of see on the map there, and I'll kind of go back. Um, and then we have a train there, the Glacier Express, that goes right through the Alps. Um, it's our, a classic summer trip for us, July 8th, uh, Amsterdam pre-tour. So as I get into it, you got planes, trains, ships, and more. And, uh, but it, but it's, it, it's true, you have three of the, 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 the most famous trains in all of Europe. You have the Glacier Express, which winds its way through the Alps. You have the Gornergrat Bahn, which goes from the bottom of Zermatt, which is a small little ski village in Switzerland, and goes all the way up to the top to experience the Matterhorn. Um, and then you have Mount Palas Pilatus cogwheel train, which is the steepest cogwheel train in the world. And that goes down from Mount Pilatus down to Lake Lucerne. Uh, they're just, all of them are very unique and all of them really, really memorable travel experiences. And then we'll be on the Amadeus Imperial, which would be in partnership to um, the other Amadeus vessel that I, I spoke about earlier with the Dutch waterway. So same accommodation, same, uh, same everything there. So as we begin, we, we're in Amsterdam, we do an Amsterdam pre-tour, but then we'll also, when people land, we go and we go through the, the canals of Amsterdam. Um, so right off the bat, we're, we're getting that a beautiful picture there, as you can see. Um, we do the heart of the canal system before we even get on the ship start heading south uh, down the Rhine. Then from there, we'll go to Cologne. So you have the Neo-Romanesque kind of essence of Cologne and of course the famous cathedral there and we're there for a whole day. So you can kind of explore in the afternoon, uh, get lost. It's, uh, it's a great way to start the river portion of the trip. Uh, then we head down to Koblenz. So Koblenz is known as being the confluence of the Rhine and the Moselle River. So uh, it, there's kind of a neat energy there because you get different, you get French, you get German kind of influences on either portion of those regions of the two rivers. Um, and we spend the morning and, and early afternoon in Koblenz before making our way to Rudesheim. Rudesheim would be uh, the known for these kind of uphill banked vineyards that produces famous sweet German wines. And I know sweet wines aren't for everyone, but we go to the, this famous vineyard and this famous uh, a uh, gentleman who runs it. And I, I got to tell you, if you don't like him before, he's at least going to make you like him a little bit better. He is like the Robin Williams of, of, of German winemaking. It's, uh, it's an unforgettable experience. And, uh, and then we spend the night in, in Rudesheim. So you can just enjoy the small kind of German village on, on the vineyard hills. It's, it's, it's really quite nice. Um, from there, we go to Mannheim for Heidelberg. And that's known for the Heidelberg Castle, which you see on the bottom left there. Uh, famous 13th century castle. It's still very well intact for, uh, for a castle of that age and, uh, and a wonderful little town there as well. Uh, before we then go to Strasbourg. And so Strasbourg, all of a sudden we've been in Germany more or less for the last two days. And then we're on an island, which just the island and surrounding area is part of France, Strasbourg. And it's, uh, it's in, encapsulated by these uh, beautiful canals. And we spend a full day there, full afternoon, evening, just... Uh, Wonderful food, wonderful history there, and uh, a good way to end the river portion before we get into Switzerland. So we'll disembark in Basel, and then uh, we'll spend the afternoon in Bern to see the capital um, before making our way down to Zermatt for the matter. So in Zermatt, that, again, that's that little idyllic kind of, you can, that's the bottom center picture, ski village. Um, we're there in the summer, so it's beautiful. It's like these little chalets. Our, uh, the place we stay has views of the Matterhorn. You know, when you wake up, you can see the Matterhorn in the morning. Um, and that's, that's the big draw here. So full day, people can go up to the Matterhorn on the, the, the Gornagrat Bond that I described earlier. Um, you can hike down. There's five different levels. And it's, uh, it, you, it, this, more than any place on the itinerary, you feel like you're just in a completely different world. I mean, there's nothing around you except mountains. Uh, maybe a few goats, sheep, things like that, but it, it's, it's spectacular. And, the, and of course, the Matterhorn is pretty amazing. And then finally, we finish with Lucerne, which is actually my favorite part of the itinerary. 
so in Lucerne, it's right on Lake Lucerne. You stay at this famous property called the Schweitzerhof. It's been there for you know hundred years. Everyone stayed there from Mark Twain to Nabokov to Keith Richards. I don't think Keith Richards remembers it, but uh, but he signed the book. <laughs> And then um, we go up to Mount Pilatus, which is the bottom left-hand uh, picture there. And then we take the cogwheel train down, that steep cogwheel train. Then we get on a boat around the lake. You have a glass of wine. You go around Lake Lucerne, and then you're back in the heart of the city by the church bridge that you see there. That's that center photo, that bridge going across the lake. So it's a wonderful way to end. Um, this is our last trip to discuss some stuff I'm doing. Okay, we've got doing fine with time. Uh, so we have plenty of time for, uh, for questions. So um, here is a, it's a different style trip from the other ones that I've been discussing. So this would be our village life in Dordogne trip. So this would be a land trip. Uh, we end up doing about 25, 30 people or so on it. And it's in a, uh, it's in a neat part of France that a lot of people don't uh, either get to or are, aren't fully aware of. It's the Dordogne River Valley. As you can see on the map, it would be kind of southern, not quite fully southwest France, but kind of southern central France. Um, and we stay at a little town called Sarlala, Canada, and it's about two hours east of Bordeaux. And um, it's this beautiful little kind of river town, um, very slow paced, but has uh, architecture going back 300, 400 years that are still part of the town. And, not only just incorporated, but used, you know, the bakeries, the restaurants, things like that are in these incredibly uh, beautiful old structures. And, uh, and this is a fall trip. So we go there, it's a nice time of year to get away, um, you know, before the Thanksgiving holidays and everything like that. And after the end of the summer, it's a beautiful time to go there and I can jump into the itinerary a little bit. So we stay at a, a property called the Plaza Madeleine. And so that was originally a chateau in a family for 200 years. And then a couple of uh, years, decades ago, they converted it into accommodations and then they refurbished it just a few years ago. Um, and it's a, it's a beautiful property. It's right in the heart of town. It's a two minute walk to get downtown. Um, so what's nice about that is every afternoon we go out in the morning on excursions, you come back, you know, maybe relax a little bit at the Plaza Madeleine and then you walk into town and have the full afternoon and you can you get to know the bakeries, you get to know your favorite place to grab a glass of wine, things like that. There's beautiful food markets throughout. So it's, uh, it, it's really lovely. Um, so some of the things that we'll do is we go to Rocamador and that would be a medieval site just uh, a couple miles outside of Sarla. And that same day we go to Suilac, which is a gorgeous, very large abbey, a French abbey, um, kind of right in the middle of the countryside. Then uh, after that, we'll do Les and the Brie du Camp. And, um, you know, these are known for their, their gardens. And then the Brie du Camp is a prehistory museum, which is a good precursor to our, to our next day, because the, the big highlight, or one of, I should say, there's many highlights, would be um, going to Lascaux, which are the caves of Lascaux. And these were where they discovered prehistoric, paintings by uh, prehistoric humans dating back, they think about 17,000 years. Um, and the whole site itself has, uh, has some various artifacts. And um, it, it's really, it's remarkable when you think of uh, just how long ago these things were being created and, and how they still uh, resonate with us today and, and, and are pertinent to some degree as far as humans making art from things of that nature. So then the, the other thing would be we go to, uh, to Rufignac, which is, um, it's kind of a more medieval feel to it. There's a castle there and, uh, and we go to a great wine tasting later that afternoon. And then the final full day is, uh, I couldn't think of a better way, we go down the Dordogne River. So Bagnac and Dolm are on the river. We go down the river, we go to a, a Chateau vineyard. We go, we try the Gabar cuisine, um, which is a famous cuisine in that region. And I kind of rich that's involved. Uh, and then back to Sarlacc, Canada for the end of the trip. Um, and uh, people really enjoy this and, and they really enjoy being there that time of year. Um, so a wide range of trips we're offering to South Carolina uh, in 2020 and then that Greek Isles trip in 2021. Um, I can't tell you how excited we are as a company and as an industry to be back traveling and, uh, and being able to discuss trips with 
with individuals and um, and really appreciate your time listening and letting me kind of get back into the itineraries because I, I love talking about them and it's been so long that I've been able to. So I really appreciate you all uh, giving me the time to, to talk about our trips. Uh, thank you. And I have the, the logo. I flipped it just so that our Griffin could be facing your logo and they'd be anyways. But um, so I will stop sharing my screen now, or I guess. Yeah, I can go ahead and start reading you some of the questions that have come in. Um, and if you all have questions in addition to these, um, please go ahead and type those either into the chat or the Q&A. We've got some time set aside to answer those. So first one, are all trips shown on the GoHagen website available to every alumni association? For example, are certain trips available to USC alumni, but not other trips? Um, no, so all of our trips are available to you know anyone. We, we ask that you call in and just let us know what alumni association you're from, just it helps us. Um, but if you, if you see another trip on there that you'd like to take that, that maybe South Carolina is not doing in 2022, but maybe they'll do in the future year, we'd love to have you on board and we'd be happy to welcome you on. Um, absolutely. And our website is, is under construction. So uh, it's not fully up to date, but we're hoping in the next month or so, uh, it'll have all our full listings and, and be fully up to date. And I put in the chat before, but I will drop that in again for you all. Um, USC specific travel website. So you can see those trips that we're featuring um, as well. The next question is, are single accommodation rooms available for the Dutch waterways trip? Yes, single accommodations. And I'm glad you asked that. Um, we are waiving the single supplement for that program. So, um, so there will be no single supplement for, for the Dutch waterways trip. So we'd love to have you join and you don't have to worry about paying a, a premium. Well, perfect. That's just great news. All right. Next question. Oh, I can answer this one. Is there a place to access this slideshow? So um, we're recording the event and we'll send out the recording as well as just a little survey um, and the link to our travel page to all of you within the next 48 hours. If you wanna go back to anything, um, you can definitely do so. Is the price included in tuition and do we get credits like regular classes? Okay, I can answer this one too. Um, so this is alumni travel, so it's different from like regular study abroad trips if you're still taking classes at the university. So this would be in addition to that um, for fun. And I mean, you'd be learning things too, it sounds like, but separate from your classes. Okay, are family members allowed to participate or is it student or alumni only? So it would be family and friends. So um, we have plenty of people who will, you know, one will be an alumni um, and then they'll bring, you know, their, their spouse, partner, and two of their friends. Um, we'll also have, um, sometimes it's, um, you know, parents of an alumni who really want to go on, on the trip and their son or daughter went to University of South Carolina and they're welcome to come. Um, so, yeah, so really we just, you know, anyone, you know, who is a, a friend and family of the Alumni Association, we, we'd love to welcome them. Right, next one. Um, do you offer any rooms for three people on the great European trip? And is there a supplement fee if it's a single? Um, so for the great journey, um, there, there's a small supplement for a single cabin. I don't have that number in front of me now, but we do also offer um, three person suites on that as well. So you have the option of doing a two person cabin or a uh, or a, a two person in a single or a three person uh, suite. And I can certainly follow up with Haven and, and get those kind of figures for you. Great, thank you. Um, so someone says they're interested in the Dutch waterways trip. Is there a website to sign up and pay the deposit or is it just mail in or over the phone? 
No, so we have um, essentially, because as I said, our, our website's under construction in the, in the future and hopefully near future, you can sign up online. But the best way to, to be would be, you can give us a ring and just sign up right out uh, with a phone call. Um, our, and I, I think, I, I don't know if I included our number, but we can certainly make sure you have that. But it's a 800-922-3088. Uh, and I'll make sure that everyone who wants it has it. Um, and you just give us a ring and you'd say, um, I'm with the University of South Carolina. I'm interested in the Dr. Waterways trip. And if you need more information, we can send you an email with more information. Or if you want to put down that deposit, we're happy to take the deposit and guarantee your, your place on the trip. Great, thank you. I want to go on that trip too. It sounds great. Yeah, the floor yacht I think is going to be really neat. It's uh, yeah, it's a small little town outside of Amsterdam that they've been building up now for six or seven years, and uh, I think it's going to be very very cool. Absolutely. All right, next question: Are the trips only for alumni, or are they also available for students? Yeah, absolutely. Students are are welcome to come. Completely. I I would say to be transparent, our um, Generally, our, our travelers are, are kind of on the older side. We don't get a whole lot of 20-year-olds, uh, um, but everyone is welcome uh, to, to be certain. And um, or some people will come with their family. We have plenty of people who might come on a trip with their parents or grandparents, um, but we welcome anyone uh, from the university. Someone asked, um, is airfare included? So airfare is separate, but we have a full uh, air department here so that if you make a booking with us, we have a, a team that will get best prices. We'll make sure your flights line up. We have complimentary transfers, luggage, luggage handling with everything, and they make sure that you have, uh, you know, are, are in that, those correct time frames. And then the, the nice thing is that they monitor your flights when you book them to when you take off and when you return. So if there's any issues there, you can track of it and, and, and they're 24-7. So even on weekends, they're available uh, for any flight issues. Wonderful, thank you. And I see someone has their hand raised. If you will type your question into the chat or the Q&A, since we're in webinar format, we won't be able to hear you. Um, but there's a little panel across the bottom of your screen where you can pull up the chat or the Q&A. Um, Robert, do you mind to give me that phone number again? I can type it into the chat for people. Sure. So it's 800-922-3088. Perfect. So I just put that in the chat if you all want to call to book. I also linked our U of SC alumni travel page that includes all of these trips. Um, and on those pages, it has the mail-in brochure if you want to book that way as well. Yeah, and on those flyers too, and as we're kind of in between getting the website back up, um, you know, you can you can just you can call us or you can email us as well, um, and you can just take a picture of it or, or fax it. But just until we get those online reservations, so call you can take an image, email it, um, but. And, but the quickest way would just be to give us a room. Perfect. So it looks like we've gotten through all of the questions. So if anyone else has some last minute questions, you could type those into the chat or the Q&A. Um, and as I mentioned before, the recording of this presentation will be sent out to your emails. Um, so if you want to go back and look at the trips with someone in your family or your friends, anything like that, you can go back to that as well. Let's see. We have another question. Is there travel insurance included in the Great Journey trip? So, so travel insurance for tour operators, they're, it's a separate entity. And uh, we have a company we recommend. And Haven, I'm, I'm not sure if, you, if South Carolina has their own that they recommend off the top of my head. Uh, but in any event, it's it's incredibly important, especially um, now with, with the return to travel, um, to, to purchase some form of it. We highly, highly recommend it. It's not required, but uh, we'll provide all sorts of options to you. But the actual travel insurance companies are a separate entity than the tour operator. 
but um, they they've kind of increased the levels of protection and things like that um, going forward now and, and we certainly will provide you all sorts of resources. Great, thank you. That was a good question. I'm glad you brought that up. All right, anyone else? Lots of exciting trips coming up in the upcoming year. Happy to be back to traveling again. Let's see, are visas required for any of these trips? These specific ones I'd have to think about. There are certain um, certain trips and areas we go to that do require visas and we handle all of that. So we take care of all the visas for you. So again, you wouldn't have to worry about, um, you know, forgetting or having to go through the governments and all that. We do all that for you for these particular trips. Um, I don't believe so. The only one that might possibly would be the Amazon trip, but I don't know about that, but again, we would take care of all of that for you. Thank you so much. Well, it looks like those are all the questions. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I hope you learned a lot about all the different trips that we have coming up and just what travel will look like in this post pandemic world. We'll follow up with an email after this and we do have one more Travel Insider event coming up on July 20th. And thank you so much, Robert, for your time today. Super informative presentation. So I know we all really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everyone, for having me here. It's been fun. All right, everyone, have a great afternoon.